Hello, church. Good morning. Man, Hector just brought some challenge to me with all those colorful pictures back there. <laughs> Way to do it. Way to go. Uh, such a blessing and such a privilege to, uh, to be with you all throughout this day, throughout this morning. Isn't God good? Can we scream it out? God is good. Wow, you guys are good. Hey, man, you're awake this morning. I like that. Well, um, if you've been to one of my workshops, you did my mini, mini presentation about who I am. I'm Pastor Heber Tikas. My wife is here. I lead church multiplication for GCI, which is uh, dear to my heart. Um, I also lead our Spanish-speaking churches here in the United States. I, I supervise and oversee uh, those congregations, although most of them are in our western region. Uh, and Tim Sitterly is our regional pastor out there. I also supervise and oversee the congregations uh, throughout the country of Mexico. But first and foremost, I am a father and I am a husband. Amen. And uh, I'm also a pastor. I have a pastor's heart and uh, I ache for our community. I love our community. I love our congregation. Thank God for this clock. It's counting down because let me make sure I see it because I'm kind of known to go over time. Anyways, um, I want to talk about our U.S. Spanish speaking churches. Um, in our, in our Spanish re region, uh, here in the United States, we have eight congregations in the U.S. with seven of them uh, concentrated in, in the Southern California area, uh, including our, our churches. I am blessed. Uh, I am privileged. Um, all I need to do is hop on my car and I am uh, 25, 30 minutes, maybe 50 minutes away from a congregation that will be the furthest to where I live and where I am. Um, we have over 400 worshipers worshiping on Sunday morning in our Spanish-speaking congregations in, in Southern California. Uh, we've been blessed. Uh, we've had about 56 baptisms, um, I believe, since the last conference or over the last uh, uh, three years. So the, the Lord has been good to us. Uh, he's been gracious to us and given us uh, some growth. Uh, there are a few congregations that I, I may want to highlight um, that are consistently um, participating with Jesus uh, in sustained growth and missionality uh, in our communities. Um, as you know, um, I've been in, in pastoral ministry uh, for a while. This, this would be uh, my congregation here. I think this is a photo from maybe about... Uh, Three months ago, I think this is April, where we're here at our Blessing of Children service. Uh, we, we are the largest congregation in a, the Spanish churches in our area. Um, the Lord has been good to me in the sense that uh, uh, we've been able to sustain our growth in the midst of all the other things that I, that I do. And uh, God is good. Amen. And uh, he's given me some folks uh, around me that, that can help me uh, do the ministry. Uh, this is one of our uh, Blessing of Children services, which is uh, one of the beautiful outreach uh, activities that, that we have in, in our church. Uh, in the next slide, uh, we'll be able to see um, Blessing of some children. But I don't know if you guys caught that little kid, little Josh, that is being blessed right there. And you see the little girl behind him? She's like, would you hurry up? She's praying for something. <laughs> when, I, when I looked at that last night, I was like going over my slides. I'm like, what is she, what is she saying in her prayer? I, I see what little Josh is doing. Uh, it's a funny thing. Kids, they understand what's going on. They, they know what is happening. Yeah, this is uh, some of the ministries that, that I truly, truly enjoy. You may see at the end of the hall back there, uh, Jesus is playing with children because we value children at Comunión de Gracia. I was telling, saying in my workshop that, that the kids are not the future of the church. They are the church for crying out loud. <laughs> they are the church. So we love kids. We value kids. Yeah, you can see our kids' choir here. Um, uh, we'll give them, create some space for them from, from time to time to, uh, uh, to be able to present and, and to participate. Now, this one here that I'm blessing right here, she didn't want none of it. <laughs> she won none of it. Uh, that's Daisy's daughter. Uh, if you can see Daisy, uh, she's wearing a club blast shirt. I didn't quite get that picture there. Um, 
On Friday nights, we have a, a club that we call it Blast. If you Google Blast, you'll find other churches that, uh, that have a, a Blast club. And, um, you know, they, every time they come to, uh, uh, to church on Friday evenings, they, they, they'll get tickets, like those that you would get at Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, if they bring their shirts, uh, they'll get tickets. If they participate, they'll get tickets. If they bring their Bible, they'll get tickets. Uh, if they know their Bible verse, they'll get tickets. If they hide them, say hi to me, they may get some tickets too. <laughs> so three times a year, two to three times a year, the ministry will open up the store for them. Uh, they can't bring dollars, no Ben Franklins, none of that. Uh, they get to bring their tickets so they can buy stuff, uh, some goodies. Uh, it's, it's such a joy to, to see their faces with their bags full of goodies when we open up the store for them. Uh, that's what our children ministry, ministry does um, in our congregation. The next church that I can illustrate here in our Spanish-speaking churches, uh, this is Pastor Manuel Ochoa and his wife Soledad. Um, Manuel, he's, he's been a pioneer in our, in our region in Spanish-speaking churches. Actually, he is responsible uh, for the planting of the church where I'm at. Um, uh, he's been a, a, a really good, good mentor uh, along with Lorenzo Arroyo for me. And uh, this is uh, his church. He's having a baptism service here not too long ago. Uh, they have a really good uh, ministry as well uh, to, to children. I thought I had some more pictures there, but I don't. Um, they, they still run a, a, an Awana clubs on Thursday or Friday nights. And um, they do a lot of uh, community outreach to their clubs as well. Uh, that's Pastor Manuel Ochoa. Uh, on the next slide, who you see here is uh, Enoch Palacios and his wife, Lourdes. I pulled on their ears. I tapped on their, on their back. I kind of pulled their hair to try to get them to come uh, to Orlando this year. Unfortunately, it could not happen. Uh, but uh, Enoch, he, is, uh, he went out church planting with me. And this is the congregation that he now pastors uh, out in the city of L.A. Uh, they're a good church. Um, uh, they are attending close to 90 on, on Sundays. Uh, our Hawthorne Church also has a 80 to 90 attendance uh, on Sunday mornings. So uh, they're, they're participating with Jesus and they are, they are working. They are doing God's work. Let me, let me move over to uh, GCI Mexico. I have inherited GCI Mexico this year from Lorenzo Arroyo who retired uh, in, in, in April. Uh, it has been a blessing. I know our brethren in Mexico. Uh, I've been out there, been working with them for about four years now. We have 13 congregations spread out through, through the country. Uh, some small, some, some better sized churches. Uh, but they are really excited. When I first went out to Mexico, uh, the brethren kind of felt a little left out. And, and Joe uh, Tukach went out there uh, maybe about four or five years ago. And that really boosted our congregation. I want to thank uh, Gary and Wendy Moore for the work that they've done in Mexico, uh, supporting in the Canadian churches, uh, always having a heart uh, for our brothers and sisters south of the border. Uh, thank you, Canada. Amen. Yeah, let's bring it for Canada. We have about 250 to 300 worshipers worshiping throughout Mexico. Um, one of the congregations, uh, and one of these pastors here, the, the happiest men in Mexico, this is Pastor uh, Nathaniel Cruz, Nathaniel Cruz. Uh, you can go to, you go to his church and uh, you'll see his banners uh, uh, announcing the congregation. He, call, he calls his church Fulfilled Promised. And he's got a little cartoonish picture of himself all over the church. I mean, it's just funny. You have to see it. Uh, unfortunately, I, I couldn't get a, an image of it. Um, <laughs> Uh, the initiative outside the walls here in the United States, uh, we've been doing this for about a couple of years now. And I've taken that to, uh, uh, to Mexico and put a cohort together. And uh, this March, we were out in Mexico City and we took this congregation outside the walls. Uh, Nathaniel Cruz, he inherited this church from his father, Hector Cruz, uh, who passed away about three and a half years ago or so. He was 26 years old when he became the pastor of this church. It was a church of about 30, 35 people or so. And it turned out to be a church of about 15. You're too young. Uh, you can't do this. But uh, I, when I saw Nathaniel for the first time about eight, nine years ago that I met him, I said, brother, I see a lot of gifting in you. One day you may be a pastor. And he never forgot that. 
He never forgot that. And he's now pastoring this church. And they're attending about 70. He texted me last, uh, last event that he had. We had 82 people come to church here. Uh, I'm like, awesome. We went outside the walls with the church. And, yes, I took a gondola ride with Greg Williams. Yes, Greg Williams, you know, went outside the walls with me as well. But it was not Venice. It was Xochimilco, Mexico. So that's still in my bucket list, Greg. And that gondola ride is not going to happen with Greg. It's going to happen with my beautiful wife. Yes. So that's our congregation in Mexico City. Uh, that's our Outside the Walls event. They have an awesome, uh, they have a beautiful uh, worship team. Uh, Nathaniel, he, uh, he, does, uh, he plays all kinds of instruments. Uh, Salomon, Solomon, the, the guy who's leading worship, he's very, very gifted. I have really, really high hopes for that congregation. I see uh, Nathaniel as a future leader in Mexico. We're working hard to uh, develop him as such. Uh, the next slide here. Uh, that you're able to see, it's our, our conference that just happened uh, in April. Uh, right there, we are, um, uh, Pastor Alfredo Mercado is ordaining. Alfredo leads our churches in Mexico. Uh, he is our national leader, so I work closely with him. Uh, he's ordaining Jose Luis Seba, uh, who's a pastor in Tlaxcala, Mexico. Someone that came to some training that I did about four or five years ago. He used to be he used to live in the States in our congregation that we used to have in Denver, Colorado. And he came out for that training. And the next time that I see him, he said, I planted two churches already. I need some help. <laughs> yes, that's what I said. I laughed. I'm like, how does that happen? I've been pulling my teeth up here up north to plant some churches. And you planted two churches already. So we were blessed. We've, we've ordained him as, as pastor of those churches. And, and we're bringing some high support to him. And uh, he's out there doing it. Uh, so thank God for that. Um, and we were ordaining him at, at, at this conference. And that's our pastors there in Mexico um, at the last pastoral conference. Uh, you can see my wife, they, my wife right there is teaching the, the pastor's wives. And in the next slide, that's SCP, SCP Mexico. Uh, again, we're grateful for the John Whitney Foundation um, SCP Mexico has grown over the last four to five years. They hadn't had a camp in the longest time. And uh, uh, Sam Mercado out of the Guadalajara Mexico Church started uh, uh, gathering the youth together. And this past SCP Mexico, I believe they had either 66 uh, uh, kids attending uh, camp. Uh, and, uh, and it's growing. It's growing and I'm thankful for that. And SCP Mexico uh, has been really uh, critical uh, to give life to the youth in Mexico and for development as well. So God is so gracious and he is so good. And that's my report on the U.S. Spanish churches in Mexico. Can you say, gracias, Señor? Gracias, Señor. Yes, not thanking me, but thanking him. Amen? Okay, so with that in mind... Um, just want to have a little talk. I was privileged that Greg said you can have 15 extra minutes to bring an inspirational word. And he said, you better bring it. So, <laughs> so here it goes. Uh, we are GCI. Amen. Can I hear that? We are, we are GCI. And what does that look like? You may want to lower the volume on me a little bit if it gets too loud. <laughs> what does it look like? How do we live out our calling of who we are as a people and who we are as a community, who we are as a church. Because we are the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we are part of the body. We are the church. Out of Philippians 3.12, just want to share this passage with you out of the message Bible. It says, I'm not saying that I have this all together. I don't have it all together. Paul didn't have it all together. You don't have it all together. Amen. Oh, that I have, I have made it. I haven't made, but I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out for me. Thank you, Jesus, that you would set our eyes on us. I enjoy Joe's presentation, uh, the opening presentation, uh, looking out the back door. He set his eyes on us. Amen. He set his eyes on you. That is the Jesus that we know. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself 
an expert in all of this, but I've got my eyes on the goal where God is beckoning us onward. We are GCI and we're moving forward, amen? Onward to Jesus. I am off and running and I'm not turning back, amen? We're off and running. We are GCI. What does it look like to be GCI? What does it look like to be the body of Christ? Uh, you know, I have some little notes here that I want to talk about challenges and the future of Mexico and the Spanish churches. But I say, I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. Because the future is in the Lord's hands. And the challenges are in his hands as well. We are moving forward. Yes, we're going to develop some leaders. Yes, we are going to plant some churches in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because we are moving forward. Yes, the Lord is going to continue to do a work in us and through us. Yes. And we're going to do it with him as he works with us. So, but what does it look like to live out our calling? And I just want to make three points about living out our calling. Uh, first, we want to live out in community. Amen. This is not a challenge. Living out in community, we, we know a little bit about this. We, we've called this our family reunion. And yes, we are GCI in this fashion. We're living out in community in this way. Uh, as we look forward to the time that we come together uh, as one church, as one united church. But we also live out in, in community in our particular congregations, in our churches. Uh, I am so in awe of all the folks that I'm meeting from different places. I took a photo from our sisters from Martinique and another island, and I'm like, I want to go there. I love the beach. Can I get invited out there? Pam, can I use my budget to go to Martinique? I don't know. But we're living out in community as an international body, amen? There you are, yes. Uh, as an interna international body, we're living out in community. But as an individual church, we've also been called to live in community. And what does it look like? This is living out our calling as we are GCI. Loving and accepting one another. Amen. Even when it gets messy. The woman between my beautiful wife, she is the better half as you can see. I'm talking about my wife, not the woman in between us. <laughs> This is Ophelia, Ophelia in Espanol. Uh, Ophelia, she's been coming to our church probably for about four years. Uh, some of our folks were outside the walls, invited Ophelia to come to, uh, to our church, and she, she came to our church. She's got a problem. She's schizophrenic. And she's told me straight up, Pastor, I'm schizophrenic. Sometimes I'm on my meds, and sometimes I'm not on my meds. So I have to ask her, Ophelia, are you on your meds? And she's like, I think so. When she calls me, I am asking myself, should I answer, should I not answer? Most of the time, I'll be honest, most of the time I don't answer. But a lot of times I do answer. Ophelia has been in and out of our congregation. She le leaves for about four or five months and she comes back. Uh, she leaves for two months, she stays a year and then she comes back. She's been doing well lately. She's been there for about eight months, I think. The first time that she left our church, she came back or I called her or something happened. And like, Ophelia, what happened to you? Where have you been? She's like, Pastor, how can I come to your church? I'm like, well, what did I do, Ophelia? What happened? He's like, you forgot, how, but I remember. I remember that one time that you told me, go sit over there. And I obeyed. I went to go sit over there. And you sat me between two men and they were both strong. You know how much temptation that is? Sometimes it gets messy. <laughs> There's a new man coming to our church. I don't know if they knew each other, but he, she, she drives. Oh, my God, she drives. And she started giving him a ride to church. And, uh, and one day, on one Friday, he came to church, and he gave her a blessed kiss right on the cheek. She, and I was in my office, I think working on bulletins or something. She came up to me and she's like, how can this man come up to me? Pastor, you need to do something about this. He kissed me. And I'm like, oh, my Lord, he kissed her. What happened? I said, he came up and he gave me a big old kiss right here. And he says, it's in the Lord. <laughs> yes, sometimes it does get messy. <laughs> that messy. But we live in community. But we love her. 
and she loves us. We are GCI. Yes, when we say we are all included, do we mean it? I believe we do. Yes, even if you're schizophrenic, even if you look a little bit different, we are all included. God has called me to be on mission with Ophelia and, and to partner with her and live life with her and share life with her. And yes, two weeks ago she came to my office. She's like, I want to give you $700. I'm like, why people want to give me money? And she's like, please hold this money for me. I need it. But hold it for me. I'm like, oh, Lord, please. <laughs> so I have to call in a couple of sisters. Come and let's take her money. And look, we're going to put it here under key, okay? Is that okay, Ophelia? Yeah, pastor, please keep it here. And then she calls me the next day and says, put it in the bank. Somebody's going to break into the church. <laughs> put it in the bank. But we've also been called to live out our calling missionally. That, that's who we are. We are a sent church. We're part of the body. We've been sent. I, I, I've loved Eugene's presentation about the love venue and all the venues. I said amen to that. Some of you who've been outside the walls know what I'm talking about. Right, Trace? Yeah. Living out missionally is loving unconditionally. But it's also living out intentionally. It's embracing who we are. It's embracing our sentness that we are a sent people. To your right of that picture is my brother Pedro, and next to him is my brother Carlos. This was a picture from Wednesday night. We went to go see Real Madrid get beaten by Manchester City. Yeah. Some of the men from church, we went and we went to dinner. Some men from church and my son, who's right there next to me as well. But I want to highlight this picture because Pedro, he's been in our church for about three months. He lives about three blocks from our church. And his, his graphic story is just stuck in my mind as he was crossing the border into uh, the United States. Yes, he crossed the border into the United States. And yes, I prayed for him. Um, and uh, he said that, that they were so thirsty that they ha he had to take off his shirt and muddy water went through his shirt, somewhat of a filter, to be able to drink water. So every time I see him, I'm, I'm always offering him a bottle of water because I just painted a picture in my, in my mind. When we're intentional about living missionally, awesome things happen. We participate in ways that are quite joyful. Quite joyful. Uh, Carlos, he's been coming to our church for two years, got baptized last year. He came to our men's meeting for the first time. And I am so grateful for him because he is one of the ones, he's now an usher. I gave him a key to the church. And I told him, Carlos, I won't be there on Friday or on Sunday. Sunday, I need you to be there at 9. I need you to open the church and you know what to do with the coffee and you know what to do with the rest. It's like, Pastor, I'll be there. It's joy. It's a joy. To see the transformation in his life, it, it's truly a joy. To embrace who we are because we are GCI. And we are a sent organism because the God is ascending God. If you were in my worship, we said that he sent Noah, he sent Abraham, he sent Moses, he sent Joseph, even though Joseph did not know it, he sent them, he sent prophets, he sent kings, he sent his son. John 20, 21, as the Father has sent me, therefore I sent you. Let's embrace our calling. So we are GCI. We are GCI as we live out in community. We are GCI as we live out missionally. And we are GCI as we live out joyfully. Amen. And we take joy in who we are. And we take joy in the miracle that we are. And what the Lord has done throughout the years in our lives and in our fellowship. And let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. What happened in the past, happened in the past. Paul said, moving onward. Paul said, moving forward. 
And we are moving from there to there, yes. That's who we are. That's who we are as GCI, as one body. So let's live out our calling. Let's live it out, let's live it out in community, together, in shared life. Let's live it out missionally, corporately, individually, as a church body. Let's get out and engage. Let's get out and be intentional. Let's be who we are, because that's who we are. Like we heard Gary say, that our doing, that our being and our doing are not separated from each other. Amen? Can we give him some praise? All right. So, so we are living out in community. We are living out missionally. And we are living out joyfully. Let's enjoy who we are because our, our identity is in Christ Jesus. That's, that's where identity lies. So let's just be joyful on a daily basis and let's know that he's got this because he truly does. He has got this. Amen. God bless you, church. So the one last thing that I want to say, let's eat lunch. <laughs> let's pray. Father God, you are a most gracious God. If you believe that, just raise your right hand. You are a most gracious God, Lord, and you've been so gracious to us, to GCI and who we are in you, Jesus. For the body that we are, for the church that we are. Lord, I'm just so thankful. I am thankful for the clarity that you've brought to us over the years. Not just the clarity of theological points of views and how you've revealed the Father in Jesus and Holy Spirit, how, how you've loved us and how you've guided us and you've led us. I, I am also so thankful for the clarity that you brought to us in our calling to be one body, to be a community for our, the clarity to, to be on mission with you, Jesus, and to live out joyfully and to embrace our calling, to embrace our sentness, and to embrace that we are GCI, that we've moved from WCG to GCI, and we embrace it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I also pray that you bless our meal today. I pray that it will be nutritious into our body. I bless every pastor, every pastor's wife, every leader here, every child, every woman, every young man, every young lady. Thank you for what you do for us. In the name of the risen Savior, amen. amen. Thank you, church.